This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kelly Bisher of Mattapoisett, Massachusetts. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Canto 17 to Canto 21. Canto 17. Remember, reader, if ever in the Alps a miss overtook thee, through which thou couldst see not otherwise than through its membrane mole, how, when the vapours humid and condensed begin to dissipate themselves, the sphere of the sun feebly enters in among them, and thy imagination will be swift in coming to perceive how I resaw the sun at first that was already setting. Thus to the faithful footsteps of my master, mating my own, I issued from that cloud to raise already dead on the low shores. O thou imagination that dost steal us so from without sometimes, that man perceives not, although around may sound a thousand trumpets. Who moveth thee if sense impel thee not? Moves thee a light which in the heaven takes form by self or by a will that downward guides it, of her impiety who changed her form into the bird that most delights in singing, and my imagining appeared the trace, and hereupon my mind was so withdrawn within itself that from without there came nothing that then might be received by it, then reigned within my lofty fantasy. One crucified disdainful and ferocious in countenance, and even thus was dying. Around him were the great Ahasuerus, Esther his wife, and the just Mordechai, who was in word and action so entire. And even as this image burst asunder of its own self in fashion of a bubble, and which the water it was made of fails, there rose up in my vision a young maiden, bitterly weeping, and she said, O queen, why hast thou wished in anger to be not? Thou slain thyself, Lavinia, not to lose. Now hast thou lost me. I am she who mourns, mother, at thine ere at another's ruin. As sleep is broken, when upon a sudden new light strikes in upon the eyelids closed, and broken quivers ere it dieth wholly, so this imagining of mine fell down, as soon as the effulgence smote my face, greater by far than what is in our want. I turned me round to see where I might be, when said a voice, here is the passage up, which from all other purposes removed me, and made my wish so full of eagerness to look and see who was it that was speaking, it never rests till meeting face to face. But as before the sun, which quells the sight, and in its own excess its figure veils, even so my power was insufficient here. This is a spirit divine who in the way of going up directs us without asking, and who with his own light himself conceals. He does with us as man doth with himself, for he who sees the need and waits the asking blindly leads already towards denial. Accord we now our feet to such inviting, let us make haste to mount ere it grow dark, for then we could not till the day return. Thus my conductor said, and I and he together turned our footsteps to a stairway, and I, as soon as the first step I reached, near me, perceived a motion as of wings and fanning in the face and saying, Vieti pacifici, who are without ill anger. Already over us were so uplifted the latest sunbeams which the night pursues, that upon many sides the stars appeared. O oh, manhood mine, why dost thou vanish so, I said within myself, for I perceived the vigour of my legs was put in truce. We at the point were where no more ascends, the stairway upward and were motionless, even as a ship which at the shore arrives and I gave heed a little, if I might hear, aught whatsoever in the circle knew, then to my master turned me round and said, Say, my sweet father, what delinquency is purged here in the circle where we are? Although our feet may pause, pause not thy speech. And he to me, The love of good remiss in what it should have done is here restored, here plied again the ill-belated oar, but still more openly to understand, Turn unto me thy mind, and thou shalt gather some profitable fruit from our delay. Neither creator nor creature ever, son, he began, was destitute of love, natural or spiritual, and thou knowest it. 
the natural was ever without error. But err the other may by evil object, or by too much, or by too little vigor. While in the first it well directed is, and in the second moderates itself, it cannot be the cause of sinful pleasure. But when to ill it turns, and with more care or lesser than it ought, runs after good, against the Creator works his own creation. Hence thou mayst comprehend that love must be the seed within yourselves of every virtue, and every act that merits punishment. Now, inasmuch as never from the welfare of its own subject can love turn its sight, from their own hatred all things are secure, and since we cannot think of any being standing alone, nor from the first divided, of hating him, is all desire cut off. Hence, if, discriminating, I judge well, the evil that one loves is of one's neighbor, and this is born in three modes in your clay. There are, who, by abasement of their neighbor, hope to excel, and therefore only long that from his greatness he may be cast down. There are, who power, grace, honor, and renown, fear they may lose because another rises, thence are so sad that the reverse they love, and there are those whom injury seems to chafe, so that it makes them greedy for revenge, and such must needs shape out another's harm. This threefold love is wept for down below. Now of the other will I have thee here, that runneth after good with measure faulty. Each one confusedly a good conceives, wherein the mind may rest and longeth for it. Therefore to overtake it each one strives. If languid love to look on this attract you, or in attaining unto it this cornice, after just penitence torments you for it, there is other good that does not make man happy. Tis not felicity, tis not the good essence of every good the fruit and root, the love that yields itself too much to this, above us, is lamented in three circles. But how tripartite it may be described, I say not that thou seek it for thyself. End of Canto 17 Canto 18 an end had put unto his reasoning the lofty teacher, and a tent was looking into my face if I appeared content. And I, whom a new thirst still goaded on, without was mute, and said within, Perchance the too much questioning I make annoys him. But that true father, who had comprehended the timid wish, that opened not itself, by speaking gave me hardihood to speak. Whence I, My sight is, master, vivified, so in thy light that clearly I discern, whatever thy speech importeth or describes. Therefore I thee entreat, sweet father dear, to teach me love to which thou dost refer, every good action and its contrary. Direct, he said, towards me the keen eyes of intellect, and clear will be to thee the error of the blind who would be leaders. The soul, who is created apt to love, is mobile unto everything that pleases, soon as by pleasure she is waked to action. Your apprehension from some real thing an image draws, and in yourselves displays it, so that it makes the soul turn unto it. And if, when turned, towards it she incline, love is that inclination, it is nature, which is by pleasure bound in you anew. Then, even as the fire doth upward move, by its own form which to ascend is born, where longest in its matter it endures. So come the captive soul into desire, which is a motion spiritual, and never rests, until she doth enjoy the thing beloved. Now may apparent be to thee how hidden the truth is from those people who aver all love in itself a laudable thing, because its matter may perchance appear, I, to be good, but yet not each impression is good, albeit good may be the wax. Thy words and my sequacious intellect, I answered him, have love revealed to me, but that has made me more impregned with doubt. For if love from without be offered us, and with another foot the soul go not, if right or wrong she go, tis not her merit. And he to me, What reason seeth here myself can tell thee? Beyond that await for Beatrice, since tis a work of faith. Every substantial form that segregate from matter is, and with it is united, specific power has in itself collected which without act is not perceptible, nor shows itself except by its effect, as life does in a plant by the green leaves. 
but still whence cometh the intelligence of the first notions man is ignorant and the affection for the first allurements which are in you as instinct in the bee to make its honey and this first desire merit of praise or blame containeth not now that to this all others may be gathered innate within you is the power that counsels and it should keep you the threshold of assent this is the principle from which is taken occasion of desert in you according as good and guilty loves it takes and winnows those who in reasoning to the bottom went were of this innate liberty aware therefore bequeathed they ethics to the world supposing then that from necessity springs every love that is within you kindled within yourselves the power is to restrain it the noble virtue beatrice understands by the free will and therefore see that thou bear it in mind if she should speak of it the moon belated almost unto midnight now made the stars appear to us more rare formed like a bucket that is all ablaze and counter to the heavens ran through those paths which the sun sets aflame where he of rome sees it twixt sardes and corsicans go down and that patrician shade for whom is named piatola more than any mantuan town had laid aside the burden of my lading whence i who reason manifest and plain in answer to my questions had received stood like a man in drowsy reverie but taken from me was this drowsiness suddenly by a people that behind our backs already had come round to us and as of old is Ismenus and Asipus, beside them saw at night the rush and throng, if but the Thebans were in need of Bacchus. So they along that circle curved their step, from what I saw of those approaching us, who by good will and righteous love are ridden. Full soon they were upon us, because running moved onward all that mighty multitude, and two in the advance cried out lamenting, Mary in haste unto the mountain ran, and Caesar, that he might subdue Alerda, thrust at Marseilles, and then ran into Spain. Quick, quick, so that the time may not be lost by little love. Forthwith, the others cried, for ardor and well-doing freshens grace. O folk, and whom an eager fervor now supplies perhaps delay and negligence, put by you in well-doing through lukewarmness. This one who lives, and truly I lie not, would fain go up, if but the sun relight us. So tell us where the passage nearest is. These were the words of him who was my guide, and some one of those spirits said, Come on behind us, and the opening shalt thou find. So full of longing are we to move onward that we cannot. Therefore pardon us, if thou for churlishness our justice take. I was San Zeno's abbot at Verona, under the empire of good Barbarossa, of whom still sorrowing Milan holds discourse. And he has one foot in the grave already, who shall ere long lament that monastery, and sorry be of having there had power, because his son, in his whole body sick, and worse in mind, and who was evil born, he put into the place of its true pastor. If more he said, or silent was, I knew not, he had already passed so far behind us, but this I heard, and to retain it pleased me. And he, who has in every need my succour, said, Turn thee hitherward, see two of them come fastening upon slothfulness their teeth in rear of all they shouted sooner were the people dead to whom the sea was opened than their inheritors the jordan saw and those who the fatigue did not endure unto the issue with anchises son themselves to life without in glory offered then when from us so separated were those shades that they no longer could be seen within me a new thought did entrance find whence others many and diverse were born and so i lapsed from one into another that in a reverie mine eyes i closed and meditation into dream transmuted end of canto eighteen canto nineteen it was the hour when the diurnal heat no more can warm the coldness of the moon vanquished by earth or peradventure saturn when geomancers their fortuna major see in the orient before the dawn rise by a path that long remains not dim there came to me in dreams a stammering woman squint in her eyes and in her feet distorted with hands dissevered and of sallow hue i looked at her and as the sun restores the frigid members which the night benumbs even thus my gaze did render voluble her tongue and made her all erect thereafter 
in little while, and the lost countenance, as love desires it so, in her did colour. When in this wise she had her speech unloosed, she gan to sing so that with difficulty could I have turned my thoughts away from her. I am, she sang, I am the siren sweet, who mariners amid the main on man, so full am I of pleasantness to hear. I drew Ulysses from his wandering way unto my song, and he who dwells with me seldom departs so wholly I content him. Her mouth was not yet closed again before appeared a lady saintly and alert, close at my sign to put her to confusion. Virgilius, O oh Virgilius, who is this? Sternly she said, and he was drawing near with eyes still fixed upon that modest one. She seized the other and in front laid open, rending her garments and her belly showed me. This waked me with a stench that issued from it. I turned mine eyes and good Virgilius said, At least thrice have I called thee, rise and come, find we the opening by which thou mayest enter. I rose, and full already of high day were all the circles of the sacred mountain. And with the new sun at our back we went, following behind him, I my forehead bore like unto one who has it laden with thought, who makes himself the half-arch of a bridge. When I heard say, Come, hear the passages, spoke in a manner gentle and benign, such as we hear not in this mortal region. With open wings which of a swan appeared, upward he turned us, who thus spake to us, between the two walls of the solid granite. He moved his pinions afterward and fanned us, affirming those chelugent to be blessed, for they shall have their souls with comfort filled. What aileth thee that I to earth thou gazest? To me my guide began to say, we both somewhat beyond the angel having mounted. And I, with such misgiving makes me go, a vision new which bends me to itself, so that I cannot from the thought withdraw me. Didst thou behold, he said, that old enchantress whose soul above us henceforth is lamented? Didst thou behold how man is freed from her? Suffice at thee, and smite earth with thy heels, thine eyes lift upward to the lure that whirls the eternal king with revolutions vast. Even as the hawk that first his feet surveys, then turns him to the coal and stretches forward, the desire of food that draws him thither, such I became, and such as far as cleaves the rock to give away to him who mounts, went on to where the circling doth begin. On the fifth circle I had come forth, people I saw upon it who were weeping, stretched prone upon the ground, all downward turned. Adhesed pavimento anima mea, I heard them say with sighing so profound that hardly could the words be understood. O ye elect of God, whose sufferings, justice, and hope both render less severe, direct ye us toward the high ascents. If ye are come secure from this prostration, and wish to find the way most speedily, let your right hands be evermore outside. Thus did the poet ask, and thus was answered, by them somewhat in front of us, whence I, in what is spoken, divined the rest concealed. And unto my lord's eyes, mine eyes I turned, whence he assented with a cheerful sign, to what the sight of my desire implored. When of myself I could dispose at will, above that creature did I draw myself, whose words before had caused me to take note, saying, O spirit in whom weeping ripens, that without which to God we cannot turn, Susp suspend a while for me thy greater care. Who wast thou, and why are your backs turned upwards? Tell me, and if thou wouldst that I procure thee anything there whence living I departed. And he to me, Wherefore our backs the heaven turned to itself, no shalt thou, but beforehand, seest quod ego fui successor petri. Between Siestri and Chiaveri descends a river beautiful, and of its name the title of my blood its summit makes. A month and little more, said I how, weighs the great cloak on him from mire who keeps it, for all the other burdens seemed a feather. Tardy, ah, woe is me, was, was my conversion, but when the Roman shepherd I was made, then I discovered life to be a lie. I saw that there the heart was not at rest, nor farther in that life could one ascend, whereby the love of this was kindled in me. Until that time a wretched soul, and parted from God was I, and wholly avaricious. Now, as thou seest, I here am punished for it. What avarice does is here made manifest, in the purgation of these souls converted, 
and no more bitter pain than the mountain has, even as our eye did not uplift itself aloft being fastened upon earthly things. So justice here has merged it in earth, as avarice had extinguished our affection for every good whereby was action lost. So justice here doth hold us in restraint, bound and imprisoned by the feet and hands, and so long as it pleases the just Lord shall we remain immovable and prostrate. I on my knees had fallen and wished to speak, but even as I began, and he was where, only by listening of my reverence. What cause, he says, has downward bent thee thus, and I to him, for your own dignity standing, my conscience stung me with remorse. Straighten thy legs, and upward raise thee, brother. He answered, Ere not, fellow-servant, am I, with thee and with the others, to one power. If ever that holy evangelic sound, which saith, Nec nubint, thou hast heard, well canst thou see why in this wise I speak. Now go, no longer will I have thee linger, because thy stay doth incommode my weeping, with which I ripen that which thou hast said. On earth I have a grandchild named Alagia, good in herself unless indeed our house malevolent may make her by example, and she alone remains to me on earth. End of Canto 19 Canto 20 Ill strives the will against a better will. Therefore, to pleasure him against my pleasure, I drew the sponge not saturate from water. Onward I moved, and onward moved my leader, through vacant places, skirting still the rock, as on a wall close to the battlements. For they that through their eyes pour drop by drop the melody which all the world pervades, on the other side, too, near the verge approach. Accursed mayst thou be, thou old she-wolf, more than all the other beasts hast prey, because of hunger infinitely hollow. O oh, heaven, in whose gyration some appear to think conditions here below are changed, when will he come through whom she shall depart? Onward we went with footsteps slow and scarce, and I attentive to the shades I heard, piteously weeping and bemoaning them, and I, by peradventure, heard, Sweet Mary uttered in front of us amid the weeping, even as a woman does who is in childbirth, and in continuance, how poor thou wast is manifested by that hostelry where thou didst lay thy sacred burden down. There afterward I heard, O good Fabricus, virtue with poverty didst thou prefer to the possession of great wealth with vice. So pleasurable were these words to me, that I drew farther onward to have knowledge, touching that spirit whence they seemed to come. He furthermore was speaking of the largest which Nicholas unto the maidens gave, in order to conduct their youth to honour. O oh, soul that dost so excellently speak! Tell me, who wast thou? said I, and why only thou dost renew these praises well deserved? Not without recompense shall be thy word if I return to finish the short journey of that life which is flying to its end. And he, I tell thee, not for any comfort I may expect from earth, but that so much grace shines in thee, or ever thou art dead. I was the root of that malignant plant which overshadows all the Christian world, so that good fruit is seldom gathered from it. But if Duane Ghent and Lee Lim Bruges had power, soon vengeance would be taken on it. And this I pray of him who judges all. Hugh Capet was I called upon the earth. From me were born the Louis and Philips, by whom in later days has France been governed. I was the son of a Parisian butcher, what time the ancient kings had perished all, excepting one contrite in cloth of grey. I found me grasping in my hands the reign of the realm's government, and so great power of new acquest, and so with friends abounding, that to the widowed diadem pr promoted the, the head of mine own offspring was from whom the consecrated bones of these began. So long as the great dowry of province out of my blood took not the sense of shame, t'was little worth, but still it did no harm. Then it began, with falsehood and with force, its rapine, and thereafter for amends took Ponthieu, Normandy, and Gascony. Charles came to Italy, and for amends a victim made of Conradin, and then trust Thomas back to heaven for amends, a time I see not very distant now, which draweth forth another Charles from France, the better to make known both him and his, 
Unarmed he goes, and only with the lance that Judas jousted with, and that he thrusts so that he makes the paunch of Florence burst. He thence not land, but sin and infamy shall gain, so much more grievous to himself as the more light such damage he accounts. The other, now gone forth, taken his ship, see I his daughter sell, and chaffer for her, as corsairs do with other female slaves. What more, O avarice, canst thou do to us, since thou my blood so to thyself hast drawn? It careth not for its own proper flesh, that less may seem the future ill and past. I see the flower de luce Alagna enter, and Christ in his own vicar captive made. I see him yet another time derided, I see renewed the vinegar and gall, and between living thieves I see him slain. I see the modern Pilates so relentless. This does not sate him, but without decretal he to the temple bears his sordid sails. When, O oh my lord, shall I be joyful made by looking on the vengeance which, concealed, makes sweet thine anger in thy secrecy? What I was saying of that only bride of the Holy Ghost, and which occasioned thee to turn towards me for some commentary, so long has been ordained to all our prayers, as the day lasts, but when the night comes on, contrary sound we take instead thereof. At that time we repeat Pygmalion, of whom a traitor, thief, and parricide made his insatiable desire of gold, and the misery of avaricious Midas that followed his inordinate demand, at which forevermore one needs but laugh, and foolish Achan each one then records, and how he stole the spoils, so that the wrath of Joshua still appears to sting him here. Then we accuse Sapphira with her husband, we laud the hoofbeats Heliodorus had, and the whole mount in infamy encircles. Polymnestor, who murdered Polydorus, here finally is cried, O Crassus, tell us, for thou dost know, what is the taste of gold? Sometimes we speak, one loud, another low, sometimes the desire of speech that spurs us to greater now, and now to lesser pace. But in the good that here by day is talked of, Ere while alone I was not, yet near by no other person lifted up his voice. From him already we departed were, and made endeavour to overcome the road, as much as was permitted to our power. When I perceived, like something that is falling, the mountain tremble, whence a chill seized on me, as seizes him who to his death is going. Certes so violently shook not Delos, before Latona made her nest therein, to give birth to the two eyes of the heaven. Then upon all sides there began a cry, such that the master drew himself towards me, saying, Fear not, while I am guiding thee. Gloria and Excelsius Deo, all were saying, from what near I comprehended, where it was possible to hear the cry. We paused immovable and in suspense, even as the shepherds who first heard that song, until the trembling ceased, and it was finished. Then we resumed again on our holy path, watching the shades that lay upon the ground, already turned to their accustomed plaint. No ignorance ever with so great a strife had rendered me importunate to know, if erreth not in this my memory, as meditating then I seemed to have, nor out of haste to question did I dare, nor of myself I there could aught perceive. So I went onward timorous and thoughtful. End of Canto Twenty Canto Twenty One the natural thirst that never is satisfied excepting with the water for whose grace the woman of Samaria besought, put me in travail, and haste goaded me along the encumbered path behind my leader, and I was pitying that righteous vengeance, and lo, in the same manner as Luke writeth that Christ appeared too upon the way, from the sepulchral cave already risen, a shade appeared to us and came behind us down gazing on the prostrate multitude nor were we aware of it until it spake, saying, My brothers, may God give you peace. We turned us suddenly, and Virgilius rendered to him the countersign thereto conforming. Thereon began he, In the blessed council, thee may the court voracious place in peace, that me doth banish in eternal exile. How, said he, and the while we went with speed, if ye are shades whom God deems not on high, who up his stairs so far has guided you? And, said my teacher, If thou note the marks which this one bears, And which the angel traces, 
well shalt thou see he with the good must drain. But because she who spinneth day and night for him had not yet drawn the distaff off, with cloth o' lays for each one and compacts, his soul, which is thy sister and my own, in coming upwards could not come alone, by reason that it sees not in our fashion. Whence I was drawn from out the ample throat of hell to be his guide, and I shall guide him, as far on as my school has power to lead. But tell us, if thou knowest, why such a shudder? Erstwhile the mountain gave, and why together all seemed to cry as far as its moist feet? In asking, he so hit the very eye of my desire, that merely with the hope my thirst became the less unsatisfied. Not is there, he began, that without order may the religion of the mountain feel, nor aught that may be foreign to its custom. Free is it here from every permutation, from it, what from itself heaven in itself receiveth, can be of this the cause, and not beside. Because that neither rain, nor hail, nor snow, nor dew, nor hoar-frost any higher falls than the short little stairway of three steps, dense clouds do not appear, nor rarefied, nor coruscation, nor the daughter of Thamus, that often upon earth her region shifts. No arid vapour any farther rises than to the top of the three steps I spake of, whereon the vicar of Peter has his feet. Lower down, perchance, it trembles less or more, but for the wind that in the earth is hidden, I know not how, up here it never trembled. It trembles here whenever any soul feels itself pure, so that it soars or moves to mount aloft, and such a cry attends it. Of purity the will alone gives proof, which, being wholly free to change its convent, takes by surprise the soul and helps it fly. First it wills well, but the desire permits not which divine justice with the self-same will there was to sin upon the torment sets. And I, who have been lying in this pain five hundred years and more, but just now felt a free volition for a better seat. Therefore thou hurtst the earthquake and the pious spirits along the mountain rendering praise unto the Lord that soon he sped them upwards. So said he to him, and since we enjoy as much in drinking as the thirst is great, I could not say how much it did me good. And the wise leader. Now I see the net that snares you here, and how ye are set free. Why the earth quakes, and wherefore ye rejoice. Now who thou wast be pleased that I may know, and why so many centuries thou hast here been lying, let me gather from thy words. In days when the good Titus, with the aid of the supremest king, avenged the wounds whence issued forth the blood by Judas sold, under the name that most endures and honours was I on earth, that spirit made reply, greatly renowned, but not with faith as yet. My vocal spirit was so sweet that Rome, me a Thalusian, drew unto herself, where I deserved to deck my brows with myrtle. Satius the people name me still on earth, I sang of Thebes and then of great Achilles, but on the way fell with my second burden. The seeds unto my ardour were the sparks of that celestial flame which heeded me, whereby more than a thousand have been fired. Of the Aeneid speak I, which to me a mother was, and was my nurse in song, without this weight I not a drachma's weight. And to have lived upon the earth that time Virgilius lived, I would accept one son more than I must ere issuing from my ban. These words towards me made Virgilius turn with looks that in their silence said, Be silent, but yet the power that wills cannot do all things. For tears and laughter are such pursuivants unto the passion from which each springs forth, and the most truthful least the will they follow. I only smiled as one who gives the wink, whereat the shade was silent, and it gazed into mine eyes where most expression dwells, and, As thou mayst consummate a labour so great, it said, Why did thy face just now display to me the lightning of a smile? Now am I caught on this side and on that, one keeps me silent, one to speak conjures me, wherefore I sigh, and I am understood. Speak, said my master, and be not afraid of speaking, but speak out, and say to him what he demands with, with such solicitude. One sigh. Thou peradventure marvellous, O antique spirit, at the smile I gave, but I will have more wonder seize upon thee, this one, 
who guides on high these eyes of mine, is that Virgilius, from whom thou didst learn to sing aloud of men and of the gods. If other cause thou my smile impudest, abandon it as false, and trust it was those words which thou hast spoken concerning him. Already he was stooping to embrace my teacher's feet, but he said to him, Brother, do not, for shade thou art, and shade beholdest. And he uprising, now canst thou the sum of love which warms me to thee comprehend, when this our vanity I disremember, treating a shadow as substantial thing. End of Canto 21